The Templars and the Wisdom of the Sufis Narrated by Zoran the Dragon Ah, oh, greetings again, young traveller. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey one that weaves together the threads of history, mysticism, and wisdom from distant lands. Our tale today takes us to the Knights Templar, those famed warrior monks who held deep secrets of the universe. But, did you know that their story goes far beyond Europe's castles and battlegrounds? It stretches to the ancient deserts and the spiritual sanctuaries of the Sufis. Let me take you back to the 12th century, when the Templars were at their height, cloaked in white tunics adorned with a red cross. They were known for their valor in the Crusades, but also for something much subtler and more profound. The Templars were seekers of wisdom, wisdom not bound by borders or religions. And it is here, in this thirst for deeper understanding, that our story truly begins. As I flew through the vast skies of the Middle East, watching over both Christian and Muslim lands, I saw something remarkable unfold. The Templars, though sworn to defend Christianity, were deeply curious about the spiritual knowledge of the lands they found themselves in. One group, in particular, captured their attention the Sufis. Now, who are the Sufis, you ask? Ah, they are the mystics of Islam, known not for their swords or political ambitions, but for their devotion to the inner journey, the path to divine love and unity with the One. Unlike many who sought to conquer lands or accumulate riches, the Sufis sought to conquer the self, to strip away the illusions that bind the human soul. Through poetry, dance, and prayer, they sought direct experience of the divine, transcending dogma and division. In this, the Templars saw a reflection of their own inner calling. It was during the Crusades that the Templars came into contact with these Sufi mystics. Behind the scenes, away from the clash of armies, there were quiet exchanges, moments of profound learning between the two groups. The Templars, though warriors on the outside, were deeply spiritual men. In the Sufis, they found teachers whose knowledge extended far beyond the battlefield. The Sufis taught them about the inner path, a spiritual journey that mirrored the Templars' own quest for inner purity and enlightenment. Through these secretive exchanges, the Templars were introduced to practices that, at first, might have seemed foreign, but soon resonated with their own beliefs. The Sufis taught them the importance of meditation, breathing techniques, and sacred geometry, principles that align the mind, body, and spirit with the divine order of the universe. Ah, oh, yes, sacred geometry my favorite. You see, the universe, from the movement of stars to the spiraling of galaxies, is built on mathematical patterns, and the Sufis understood this deeply. Through these geometric shapes, the Templars began to see the divine in all things. But there was something even more intriguing that the Sufis shared a concept the Templars had not fully grasped before, the idea of divine love. To the Sufis, this love was the very essence of existence, the thread that connects all beings. They spoke of the heart as the true seat of knowledge, something the Templars understood in their own way. The Sufis would say, the heart is the window through which the soul sees the divine. It was through this understanding that the Templars began to soften their rigid interpretations of faith, seeing beyond the boundaries of religion into the universal truth of love. The Sufis were also masters of symbolism. They saw the universe as a reflection of a greater, unseen reality, and they used symbols to convey truths that could not be spoken in words. The Templars adopted many of these symbols into their own practices, which is why, to this day, many believe that the Templars' rituals carried secret meanings, hidden beneath the surface. One of the most profound teachings the Templars took from the Sufis was the idea of Dika, or remembrance. For the Sufis, this was the practice of remembering the Divine in every moment, whether in battle or in prayer, in silence or in song. The Templars, too, began to practice their own form of remembrance, keeping their hearts and minds focused on the divine even in the chaos of war. It gave them a sense of peace and purpose that transcended their earthly mission. As the years went on, the Templars returned to Europe, carrying not just gold and relics, but the wisdom of the East. They built structures, such as the famous Temple Church in London, 
Using sacred geometric principles they had learned from the Sufis, they formed inner circles of spiritual knowledge, where the teachings of Sufi mysticism blended with their own Christian beliefs, creating a unique synthesis of East and West. This hidden knowledge, passed down through secret rituals and symbols, gave rise to many of the mysteries that surround the Templars to this day. But it wasn't just the knowledge of the universe that the Templars brought back. It was the understanding that true power comes not from the sword, but from wisdom and love. This realization reshaped the Templar order in ways that many still do not fully understand. It is said that the Templars' later years were marked by an even deeper commitment to spiritual pursuits, influenced by the teachings they had absorbed from their time with the Sufis. So, my dear traveler, the Templar story is more than just a tale of warriors and castles. It is the story of seekers men who were open to wisdom, no matter where it came from. In their journeys, they found kindred spirits in the Sufis, who guided them toward deeper understanding, toward the realization that all true power lies within. And perhaps, as you continue on your journey, you will remember the lesson of the Templars and the Sufis, that the greatest battles we fight are not with others, but within ourselves. And through love, wisdom, and remembrance, we find our way to the Divine.